Hey guys, welcome to Goblin's very first episode, and today we're going to be looking at the System 76 Gazelle. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. The title was a bit clickbaity, but if you're looking for a laptop that can play games pretty well on the go, this is an important question to ask about any laptop that you can buy. There are many options available when you shop through Amazon, Best Buy, Newegg, or anything else, and sometimes it can be hard to parse through all the options. Before we get into the more nitty gritty details about the laptop, why don't we take a look at what System76 themselves have to say about the laptop. Right now I'm just on System76's little product info page for the Gazelle, but let's go ahead and read this little blurb they have about the laptop. Make great content with the Gazelle's NVIDIA GTX 16 series GPUs. Create content so good people will, they'll be chomping at your content so good like a shark. Can we cut that? So kind of a goofy little introduction, but to me this seems like they're pitching it as a bit more of a workstation-y laptop that can play games as well. I mean, obviously with a GPU like this, it's going to be able to play games at least somewhat decently. At least, at least a whole lot better than one without a GPU. And of course, just like every single machine developed by a System76, they allow you to customize like the CPU, the GPU for the most part, the RAM, storage, all that kind of stuff. So you can kind of make it your own depending on what your budget is and such. To me, this laptop seems like a decently specced and decently priced workstation laptop as well as gaming laptop. The neutral colors and not a whole lot of extra accents or designs do make it a bit more professional and neutral looking. But at the same time, the RGB backlit keyboard and the angles and grille on the top of the case do give it a bit of a gamery casual feel. Since you can customize the laptop to fit your needs and budget, I got myself a Core i7 10750H, that was a mouthful, 6 core processor that has a 2.6 gigahertz base clock that can boost all the way up to 5.0 gigahertz. I got 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 6 gigabyte 1660 Ti, and a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And also, after the fact, I got myself a 2 terabyte SSD to add to the laptop since it saved me about 200 bucks. But you can do that in the configurator if you would like to save yourself some hassle. In total, after adding an extra 180 watt laptop charger, shipping, and tax and such, the total ended up being $1,600. No business or workstation laptop would be complete without a full featured selection of I.O. This laptop comes with, on the back, you have the power input jack, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, and a USB-C display port. On the right side, you have a USB 3 type A port, mini display port, and a full size SD card reader, which, quick aside, I love these things because it makes it a lot easier to work with Raspberry Pis, cameras, whatever else may need an SD card. And also on the left, you have a Kensington lock, which I think I've used once or twice in the last 10 years, USB 3 type A, USB 2 type A, and finally, microphone and headphone jacks. Moving on to the keyboard and trackpad, which in my opinion is pretty important when you're buying a laptop. The keyboard's pretty nice, which you'd expect from any more expensive laptop. It's pretty quiet overall, with the keys having a bit of a sharp tone. They feel very responsive compared to a box standard membrane keyboard, and there isn't a whole lot of noticeable deck flex unless you push down really hard on the keys. In my opinion, it's not my favorite laptop keyboard, but it's pretty close to being up there. Moving on to the trackpad, this is actually my favorite non-MacBook trackpad. It has a smooth, glossy feel, has dedicated left and right click buttons, which I prefer over a single piece trackpad that clicks for both right and left click, or one that has one button across the bottom for both. Moving around the screen and even playing games, like old school RuneScape on this trackpad feels buttery smooth, and kind of gets pretty close to that of the MacBook trackpads. Again, it's not my favorite trackpad, but it's well up there. So before we get into the benchmarks, why don't I go over the testing methodology I use for these benchmarks. I ran all the tests at 1080p resolution with full screen window. I ran each gaming test three times and then took the averages of the three. Although for the minimum FPS, I did take the absolute minimum for all three tests to represent the worst case scenario while you're gaming as that will have the most effect on your gameplay. I ran several games to mostly stress the GPU, although one of the games will stress the CPU a little bit more. And the six games are as follows. Let's see here. Um, so I ran Borderlands 3, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, GTA 5, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Unigen Heaven. Unfortunately, benchmarking games on Linux is finicky at the best of times, so I did have to try quite a few different things to get a consistent, repeatable result for all these games, 
in a way that I was able to easily summarize it to, you know, useful information for you guys. So there definitely are some kinks I'll have to work out, and hopefully these will get fixed over time for future benchmarks. The results don't look too bad at first glance, but there are some things I would like to note about the tests. First, for Borderlands 3, I had to run it at the high preset and not ultra, because when I ran it at ultra, the FPS sat around 13 to 14 FPS, and since, in my opinion, that's pretty unplayable, I figured I'd bump it down to high to get a more realistic gaming experience for this laptop. Next up for Grand Theft Auto 5, the benchmarks spit out results for each of the five scenes it runs. And there was always one scene that produced such a negative result, and it wasn't consistent which scene it was, the other four were completely fine, that I didn't see it fit to mark the minimum FPS as 0, 1, or even 4, when the other benchmarks were sitting around 11 to 18 FPS minimum. It's still not great when averaging out the minimum FPS values, but it's much more indicative of a typical gaming experience. The final thing to note is for Grand Theft Auto 5, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Enogen Valley, I had to turn off anti-aliasing, as running with anti-aliasing on gave such inconsistent results. The metrics were jumping up and down all over the place, and disabling anti-aliasing gave me a much, much more consistent result pattern. I'm not sure what that's all about, but you can run it with anti-aliasing at your own pleasure. Looking at these results, overall I would say this is a pretty decent gaming rig. Personally, I would dial back a little bit on the settings to get a higher frame rate, but if you're one that prefers image quality over FPS, then you can still get somewhat playable frame rates, even if it's not quite ideal. So those were all gaming tasks, and since this is a workstation laptop, or at least kind of built as a workstation-y laptop, how does it fare on some of those tasks? The following tests I ran using the Pharonix test suite, running at stock settings, and they are the Blender Classroom render, FFmpeg audio and video encoding, Inkscape converting SVG files to PNG, and then X264 and X265 encoding. Just like with the gaming tasks, there are tasks. Just like with the gaming tasks, tasks, geez. Just like with the gaming tests, there are a couple things to note with these workstation tests. First off, with the Blender Classroom test, I ran it with CPU only, although you can run it with CUDA cores if you install the CUDA libraries from NVIDIA. And while it didn't really affect the test results, I ran the first three tests originally with only three runs, but when I got to the last two, the X264 and X265, I noticed that the first two runs were consistently faster than the third run, so I decided to expand the testing out a little bit to eight runs, and I had the same pattern. The first two tests were a lot faster than the final six. Because I kind of changed the last two tests a little bit, I decided to go back through the first three tests using eight runs, just to see if I would notice the same behavior, although I did not notice it in the first three tests. To me, this would mean that the processor is boosting up for the first two tests, is getting a little hot, and then dialing back the clock speed just a little bit, after the first two tests. While it may not be entirely consistent over the eight tests, I figure I'll leave those two in there because a lot of times, unless you have some sort of enormous rendering pipeline, you're not gonna be running these encodings like back to back to back to back to back to back, you know, over and over. So I figure leaving the first two tests in there that were a little faster is a little more indicative of what you should expect. As far as I can tell, this seems pretty decent. So I guess now we've come to the part of the video where we have to talk about something important. Yes. This laptop does run Linux. Specifically, it runs Pop! OS, which is System76's own fork of Ubuntu. Typically, gamers would want to go towards Windows 10, as it is such a huge target for support for games. Although, with Valve's recent developments in integrating Wine and DXVK into Steam, which you may know as Proton, Linux can truly be a viable gaming option. On top of the usual titles that are known for natively supporting Linux, like Borderlands 2 or Left 4 Dead 2, 
Proton can mostly run Windows games, even some of the huger ones like Grand Theft Auto V, Halo Master Chief Collection, Borderlands 3, Far Cry, Skyrim, games like that. Although, I should note that some of these games have their own quirks, like Borderlands 3 you have to do a little bit of tweaking with the game launcher options, and in the Halo Master Chief Collection, some people have been having problems with sound on Halo Reach, and multiplayer doesn't work because of easy anti-cheat, not supporting Proton. But yeah, for the most part, games just work. Even just recently, I was trying to play Among Us with some friends. All I had to do was buy the game, download it, and install it with Proton, and I had absolutely no issues with it. So, what does all this mean? Who should buy this laptop? First of all, at $1,600, this really is not a bang for your buck laptop. System76 are more of the Apple of Linux computers, meaning that they charge a bit of a premium, but you do get a better experience in turn for that extra money. The hardware that you get on this laptop could certainly be gotten for probably two to $300 cheaper, maybe even more if you look for a really good deal. But in my experience, I can't tell you how many times I've bought a laptop or my friend has bought a laptop that seemed like a really good deal on paper, but the experience of using the laptop just really was not enjoyable. Whether the keyboard was uh, kind of sucky to work with, the trackpad didn't track too well, the hinge just kind of broke after like two months, it really is worth it to spend the extra money on a laptop like this. On this laptop, the keyboard and trackpad are pretty good. The 1080p display is really nice, although now that I think about it, I don't think I've mentioned that it's a 1080p display. So let's just the speakers are decent, if not great, and just overall it's a pretty nice looking laptop. Plus, for a little bonus feature, the hardware is picked out to support Linux very well. So if you care about that, then yay. I know I care. If you're a gamer and don't require any applications that specifically require Windows, like Microsoft Office or the Adobe Suite, and if you're okay with learning a new desktop paradigm, then this is a pretty good laptop. I would highly recommend it. If you've somehow made it this far, then I would like to thank you for watching the first video on this channel. I really do appreciate it. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I learned quite a bit while benchmarking this laptop and trying to keep the results somewhat consistent. And while we're here, I would like to mention that I do plan on featuring other hardware benchmarks in future reviews. It's just that right now I don't have previous benchmarks to refer to, and I really did not feel like ripping numbers off of someone else's benchmarks, as that just kind of felt a little slimy to me. I'd rather do the research myself, and future reviews will certainly feature more comparisons. That's actually going to wrap it up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of the videos down below, or just do whatever it is you need to do to make yourself feel happy. Either way, I will catch you in the next one.